Nothing ever felt as good Or as easy As when we were young Oh, 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 oh. Though I felt misunderstood Shalom, we are in Queens, New York, and we are walking into the Flushing Meadows Corona Park, which is the home of the, which was the home, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to the uh, 1939 and the 1964 World's Fair. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. Um, so I'm sad we don't have World's Fair anymore. I they, know. It seems so cool. Yeah, I would be intrigued to see what that's like. We were just walking around uh, Manhattan, Lower Manhattan, like we always do. Um, <laughs> we're like, what should we do today? Yeah. And we were planning on doing nothing. And I was like, well, actually, we have yet to see Flushing Meadows Corona Park uh, or the Unisphere, which we'll get to in a minute. So, so we decided we, to come over here. Let's go to Queens. Along with being a park, it also holds many different sports stadiums, including City Field and like three others, one of them being the USTA Billie Jean King Pavilion Stadium, something like that. Anyways, tennis. Oh, tennis. Uh, but they host the US Open, which we had no idea until just now when we showed up is it's happening, happening right now. <laughs> Whenever I was looking up directions to come here, you know how Google like it says like how busy a place is? It said very busy. And I was like, I mean probably very busy because you know it's Saturday. Yeah. But no, it's because it's yeah. the US Open. <laughs> But right now we are walking up on the main attraction of the park and also one of the main reasons I want to come here, yeah. the Unisphere. We were just children acting like a dog Crazy, naive, bold and carefree We were kids having kids Crazy, naive it amazes me that we didn't fall apart harder than So this is the Unisphere and it was built for the 1964 World's Fair. It is 120 feet in diameter, 12 stories tall. It's insane. It is the world's largest world in the world. <laughs> The second largest world in the world is the uh, Daily Planet in Raleigh, North Carolina, and it's only 72 feet in diameter. This is 120. It's insane. insane. It was built 50 years ago. Yeah. So insane. Um, so it was obviously built for the World's Fair, and it was to represent the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you'll see there's three uh, orbit lines, I guess, around it. Those are to represent the first uh, Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin, um, and then the first uh, American astronaut uh, John Glenn. And the third one is to represent the orbit of the first communication satellite, the Telestar. So re it uh, represents things. Space. And Space! <laughs> Also, Sarah literally just sat right in gum. <laughs> Don't show my butt. I'm gonna show the gum. Right in gum. Whoever spits gum on the... I know you're not supposed to sit on the pavement, but whoever spits gum on the pavement is my worst enemy. We do not have the tools necessary to get the gum off of Sarah's butt currently. <laughs> so she's just gonna carry my backpack to kind of uh, mask it. I hate that this crap happens to me. I mean, I've never sat in gum before. <laughs> happens to me all the time. I'm sitting in gum left and right cheeks. <laughs> well, besides the Unisphere, there are a few other remnants of the World's Fair that I want to go check out. Most of them are like art pieces, statue things. That piece is called Rocket Thrower, was also built for the 1964 World's Fair. What was here for the 39 World's Fair? A bunch of crap and they tore it all down. <laughs> they actually uh, did the 39 World's Fair and then we're planning on making this into a public park like it is now. Um, but then World War I happened and everything got postponed and pushed back and pushed back. Mm -hmm. They ran out of money because the World's Fair didn't actually make as much as they thought it would. Um, and then they ended up having the 64 World's Fair here, which then turned it into the park. 
So this park is the fourth largest park in New York City. Um, so there's a lot of ground to cover and a lot of ground we're not going to cover today. <laughs> but we are walking away from the Unisphere along this promenade towards the Fountain of the Planets. Which is different than the world. Right. Well, I think the Fountain of the Planets is a remnant of a past beauty. Yeah. Because it uh, is no, uh, no longer a fountain that I can, that is on at least. Um, and it doesn't look uh, worth walking over here for. Nope. <laughs> This one is called Freedom of the Human Spirit. Um, this is Flushing Meadows Corona Park because it is in the middle of Flushing Meadows community and Corona community. Um, it is not sponsored by Corona. Um, wow. <laughs> I was assuming it was. <laughs> um, but it, what was really interesting, one thing that I read about it is Corona back in the day, uh, like before the 1920s, was a metal or a, a wetlands basically um, a marshland and it was unusable land and in that time period everybody had fireplaces burning trash burning everything there was so much ash and soot all that would be put into barrels bags whatever it was put into <laughs> and then put on a train and then brought out here and it was actually dumped into this area the area of corona um, and it was a nasty place. There were like 90 foot piles of ashes out here um, that would blow all over the place. And actually F. Scott Fitzgerald in The Great Gatsby calls this area a valley of ashes. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's the way it was characterized by uh, Love some Fitzgerald. Uh, the 20s. But the reason that this area was finally cleaned up and it was no longer the Valley of Ashes was because of the 1939 World's Fair came in, actually completely transformed the topography of this area to build uh, the World's Fair out here. What'd they do with all the ash? The ashes got moved to be underneath, uh, like a lot of the, the, the whole park is surrounded by highways. So some of it was just buried underneath like the ground and all that type of stuff, but a lot of it was moved to be underneath those highways and be like the foundation the, of those oh. areas. But while we were walking over here, I saw this like weird looking tower structure thing that I'm gonna uh, at least go check that out before we leave. So we were going to go over to the big tower thing that I saw, but something better cropped up. Uh, the U.S. Open is right here next to where we were filming, and we found out that it's actually just practice days, and so it's free to go in. So we're going to go check it out. Yeah. Never mind, we're going to go find this tower thing, because we were about to walk through security, and they yelled at us and told us that we couldn't take the backpack in, and they you can check the bag, but it's five bucks. I don't care enough about tennis to pay five bucks. If it were, if it were like a... If it were like a real match and not a practice, I might yeah. consider it, but it's just practice, so I don't know. Plus, we can always come back tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, but we won't. That's the tower thing we saw. We're gonna walk over there. They keep us in speaking terms. We grow and we learn. I have no regrets, only forget. So the towers right here are just observation towers that are obviously derelict, um, sitting next to this uh, New York State Pavilion, which was built for the 1964 uh, World's Fair as well. But after the World's Fair, no further use was found for the building thing. Um, makes sense, because what even is it? <laughs> yeah, and so it was, it's been just sitting here falling apart. Um, like almost 10 years ago, they painted it yellow, which makes it look cool, but other than that, it's gonna be no like use. New York's Coliseum. Yeah, it's the, it's the Coliseum of New York. <laughs> Come see our ancient history from 1964. <laughs> oh, okay, I think that's enough uh, park exploring for today because our feet are tired and we're both hungry. But instead of going home, we decided let's try to find a place around here to eat because we're in Queens, we're never over here, and we both love Mexican food, so we're like, yeah. surely there has to be a half decent Mexican place around here. Looked it up, I found the seventh best Mexican food place on Time Out's Magazine's list of the 17 best Mexican food places in New York City, one mile from us. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> also, highway. <laughs> I actually really like walking over highways. It's like, I don't know, what is it? Highway, byway. <laughs> Highways and byways of America. What is a byway? They say that's a saying. I was going to say that sounds like.
like to think. They, they say that the highways and byways, but I don't. I've never heard experience. I don't even know what a byway is. Nor have I thought to look it up. Let's look it up. Maybe it's in between a straightway and a gateway. We were just passing this JAA Delhi Corp. Delhi Corp. Yeah. And we said, uh, if you say that like French, it sounds fancy. Ja Delacour. Could be a like a. What do they call them? A house, you know. The, like if you're a fancy designer, it's called a house uh, something. The house of whatever. House of Delacour. But it could be the house of Ja Delacour. Well, the house of Ja Delacour is the brother of Fleur Delacour. <laughs> I never could pronounce her name correctly. Fleur. Fleur. Fleur, Fleur de la Cluie. No. <laughs> Fleur de la Cluie. <laughs> no. That we didn't fall apart. In the movie. You want in the movie? <laughs> We're uh, leaving the restaurant um, and a guy wants in the movie. Um, <laughs> so he's in the movie. Yeah. Uh, but we were really, that was really good. It was good. It tasted good. But it was a little different than what I was hoping for, what I was looking for. I didn't want some fancy smancy you know, well-plated Mexican restaurant. Your good old gross Mexican food. Yes. But even though it wasn't what I was expecting, um, the taste was great and I would definitely recommend it. Yeah. Um, but that's gonna be the end of this video. We've had lots of adventures. We're just gonna go home. So if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe. If you're not, I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on this channel. Also do a podcast called Deeply Curious on any podcast app you wanna search Deeply Curious in or just go to podcast.codyjensen.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.